What metal injection molding is, is we take powdered metal and we mix it with plastic and wax and then we uh, make this feedstock and we inject it into a cavity just the same way you would plastic injection molding. We then take that product and we run it through a debind process where we will remove the wax that we put into it and then we will put that product into the furnace where we will then remove the plastic that was involved in it and then that will bring all the metal powders together and make one solid metal piece. The process is somewhat similar to plastic injection molding uh, but I think it's taken the best out of plastic injection molding where they have been able to mix metal powder with plastic and then inject it into a die which is shaped like the part. Metal injection molding begins with fine metal powders up to about 20 microns in diameter in size. Those metal powders are uh, mixed uh, to create a feedstock. They may have several types of components in metal but they also have a binder system. And there's a specific binder system that you use for a specific alloy system or material system that you're working with. Most of the time, the materials that we use in MEM are not steel. I mean, steel is, is a, stainless steel is a very important player. But there are a lot of other materials like inconel and uh, high magnetic materials, uh, high mu. Uh, those are the kind of materials that uh, are difficult to, when you, when you consider machining, you're not only going to generate a lot of scrap, expensive scrap, by using MEM, you're avoiding all that scrap. The product, uh, the feedstock, goes into um, cavities in the molding machines. Those cavities can be a single cavity. If you're doing high volume components, it may be 20, 30 cavities. So as one shot goes through the molding machines, you can make that multiple number of components. Uh, that green part, the three-dimensional part that you've made, uh, comes out of the molding machine. And the next stage or process is we have to separate the component that you're interested in from all the other stuff, the runners and the gates that come in that are a necessary part of the molding process. So those uh, extra material is, is put aside. In fact, it can be recycled so we can reuse that material. Um, but if we focus on the three-dimension part that we made in MIM, we take those components and now go through several stages. One of those stages is uh, solvent uh, extraction where we take the binder out. Uh, specifically, the system that we, MPP, are using at the moment is uh, a system whereby we, the uh, binder system is dissolves in water. So the next stage is we will put the parts into water. The binder system, the, much of the binder comes out, but some binder re is retained so that the part doesn't just lose its shape. Uh, we take, after debinding, water debinding, we take the product into an oven. We dry the moisture that's in there, take the moisture out. After we take the moisture out, we then go into a sintering furnace. That sintering furnace is going to be running in the range of 1300 degrees Celsius, and it's going to be running for multiple hours to cause that consolidation. Because in the green stage, we have approximately 60% density. We want to get to 95, 98% density. And generally we make product in the 98% density range because of that sintering process that we're using. The atmospheres that we use for sintering are similar to what we would do in, use in powder metallurgy, which are a synthetic hydrogen nitrogen mixtures is what we work with. And that synthetic mixture is a protective gas that we use in, in our sintering ovens. Uh, after that product has been sintered, now we can uh, take that 3D pr component and do all the post-sinter process that, that we can think of. The one thing that's important to remember in metal injection molded product we don't have the porosity that we did have in powder metallurgy. At 98%, all the porosity is closed off, so we don't have to worry about resin impregnation to seal that porosity. Now we can take this product and go into heat treat. We can go into any kind of plating operation. Uh, so a number of post center operations can be handled fairly quickly, just as you might handle a raw 100% density part. So now you've got a product, and the product is shippable. Uh, with additional processes uh, to the customer. Making sure that while we're molding the part, uh, keeping the mold clean, keeping it uh, free of debris, and making sure that there's no flash on the part is key to making sure that when it goes to the inspection process that everything's in place so that there's no 
uh, delays in the process during inspection. Anything that has uh, very thin sections, uh, I'm talking about uh, ten thousandths of an inch, a uh, lot of details to it, uh, something that would take incredible, incredible amount of time and cost to machine. Uh, those are the parts that are best suited for metal injection molding.